Risk aim is better than arm aim. But arm aim is also better than wrist aim. What aiming technique is best is a hot debate in the FPS community. And like most things in life, the answer of which is best, well, it depends. But with a little bit of science, I think I can show you how to get the best playstyle that fits you. First, let's break down the basics. Aiming styles can broadly be categorized into wrist aiming and arm aiming. Each style involves different muscle groups and has its own advantages and disadvantages, especially when it comes down to the type of playstyle that you use. We polled the FPS community and an overwhelming majority of FPS players for games like Valorant, CSGO, and Apex play with a wrist dominant style, with aim trainers being the outliers with more of an even distribution of the wrist, shoulders, arms, and fingers. What we can learn from this data is certainly interesting, but let's get into the basics of these different aim styles first. Wrist aiming is excellent for small adjustments of the mouse and is super useful for fast paced scenarios where you have to react quickly to moving targets. This style of aim relies primarily on the muscles of the forearm and hand with the wrist planted on the mouse pad and acting like a fulcrum. When you move your mouse laterally using wrist aiming, you're engaging muscles that start in your forearm and you pull your wrist side to side. Because of the curvature of the bones in your wrist, if you only swipe left and right with your wrist, you will end up in an arc pattern of movement. This is where your fingers come in. To get a clean straight line across your screen with your reticle, you must use your fingers to make micro adjustments to your mouse to prevent the natural arc of your wrist from ruining your straight aim. This naturally recruits the muscles in the hand responsible for flexing and extending the fingers. Wrist aiming is often associated with higher DPIs, which makes the reticle more responsive and subsequently move faster. This is a problem though because this reduces accuracy. Many wrist aimers will lower their DPI or sensitivity to try to increase accuracy, but this is a problem because it increases the range of motion needed to move the mouse across the screen, leading to increased strain of the muscles and tendons of the wrist, forearm, and hand, which we get questions about daily in our Discord. I'm planning to make a whole separate video on just DPI, so if you want more details about how to find the best DPI for your playstyle, make sure you subscribe now so you don't forget. As I just mentioned, wrist aiming can lead to overuse injuries, such as tendonitis in the wrist and forearm. This is due to the repetitive strain on those muscles and tendons, especially during long gaming sessions. Symptoms of tendinopathy can include aching, shooting pain, tightness, clicking, popping, and even poor control. Next, we have arm aiming. Arm aiming, as the name suggests, relies more on the muscles of the upper arm, shoulder, and elbow for movement. Unlike wrist aiming, where the wrist acts as the pivot point, arm aiming involves moving the entire arm to control the mouse. This method offers a different set of advantages and challenges. Arm aiming is excellent for larger sweeping movements, making it ideal for tracking targets. It is a more robust method that allows for greater precision over longer distances on your mouse pad. This style recruits larger muscle groups, which generally have more endurance and strength compared to the smaller ones in your wrist, forearm, and hand. As a result, arm aiming can be less tiring over extended periods, provided that you have good posture and a proper ergonomic setup. With arm aiming, the shoulder joint acts as the primary pivot point, allowing for large sweeping movements of the mouse, with the elbow joint compensating for the natural arc rotation of the shoulder. This can help in achieving smoother, more controlled swipes, which are beneficial in games that require tracking moving targets over a wide field of view. Players who prefer a lower DPI setting often favor arm aiming because it allows for larger muscle groups to make finer adjustments. How much elbow or shoulder is used is dependent on how far your elbow is from your body. With higher shoulder usage with lower elbow and more elbow usage with the elbow further away from the body. Additionally, arm aiming can also lead to its own set of overuse injuries, particularly in the rotator cuff muscles of the shoulder and the upper arm muscles like the biceps and triceps. And you might feel pain or stiffness or even something like reduced range of motion. Since this technique involves more significant movements, it can be slower to make small adjustments quickly. This is why many players combine arm and wrist aiming into a hybrid style using the arm for larger movements and the wrist for finer adjustments. So, which aiming technique is best for you? As mentioned earlier, the answer depends on your playstyle, 
game preferences, and physical condition. Here are a few tips to help you decide. First, analyze your game type. If you play fast-paced shooters that require quick reflexes and small adjustments, wrist aiming might suit you better. For games that involve heavy tracking, arm aiming could be more advantageous. Consider your physical condition. If you experience wrist pain or discomfort, it might be worth switching to an arm aiming technique to reduce strain on your wrist and forearm. Conversely, if you have shoulder issues, wrist aiming might be a safer option for you. Experiment and adapt. Try both aiming styles and see which one feels more natural and comfortable for you. You might find that a hybrid approach, using your arm for large movements and your wrist for finer adjustments, works best. Ergonomics and posture matter. Ensuring your gaming setup supports a healthy posture and you use a good quality chair, which you can keep your feet flat on the ground and adjust your desk and monitor height accordingly to avoid strain on your neck and back will go a long way for preventing injuries of the wrist, arm, and shoulder. And ultimately, the best aiming style is the one that feels most comfortable for you and allows you to perform at your best. By understanding the mechanics and potential risks of each style, you can make an informed decision that enhances your gaming experience while minimizing the risk of injury. If you thought this video was interesting, make sure you check out our video on the gyro ball and how it can improve the coordination of your mouse hand.